Hi, and thanks for joining me. I wanted to share with you the third and final stage of this watercolor painting. Uh, it's done again on 11 by 14 inch, uh, 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I had originally sketched in the scene. I'm going to pan over here and show you what my original source photo was, which was actually taken from the car as my husband was driving. Uh, so it was a very quick shot of a landscape near our home. And this is a little 9 by 12 oil that I had done of this particular scene. I wasn't 100% uh, happy with it. There were certain elements that I liked and certain elements that I did not like. So I decided to go ahead and rework it. And this is the final product that I have. And I used the original reference over here, more so than the oil that I had done. The oil was almost like a practice session. So when I went through the third and final step of completing this picture, I put a little bit more color and detail, some more shadows in the hills behind the trees and tried to get them to lead towards that uh, empty barn or shed that's over there. I built on the sky some more. I was going to keep it a very gray, blue, kind of a subdued color as if snow was coming, but I decided to make it more of a bright sunny day and I worked on building some of the clouds that are in the sky and I used, uh, I hope I pronounced this right, a cerulean blue for the bottom part of the sky and I blended that into an ultramarine blue trying to remember to keep the top part of my sky darker than the horizon line and I lifted the clouds with paint brushes and paper towels and also some tissue paper. So let's move on to over here to the building itself. I emphasize the shadows more that I had in there. I put in a fence that was in the original painting and I actually sketched it in first. I do sketch over the watercolor and then I lifted some of it because it was a little too intense for the fence. It took away from the main focus which was on this building and also these trees over here. They kind of support and lead the eye to the end of the paper and then bounce it back to this particular structure. Um, I learned that whenever you paint a landscape, whenever you put a man-made element in it, be it a building or a fence, the eye will naturally go to that. It will dominate the landscape. Uh, I'm not 100% pleased with how the trees came out. I tried to lift the color to give it that off-white look and uh, not too happy with it so I worked with it as best I could. I dry brushed some of the branches reaching up to the sky. I put in some shadows and then on the foreground I added some green on the mixed grasses and churned up pasture land that's over there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the clouds uh, are sort of tried to at least blend them into those mountains in the distance. So they were a little bit diffused and you have more atmospheric um, horizon there than just a definite line of the mountains. So that's pretty much it for this particular painting. Uh, it took about three steps, uh, at least for me, uh, and it's taken a while for me to get to that point. So. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a wonderful creative day and don't forget to keep practicing. Thanks.